Hello, this is Pastor Scott and welcome to the Daily Message. Today is Monday. It is July 25th. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Hebrews, which is a New Testament book. It's a shorter one. Uh, it's near the end of the New Testament and uh, it is, our uh, reading for today is Hebrews 1, 1, very first line of Hebrews, which is, long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. Then verse 2 continues, but in these last days he has spoken to us by a son. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. The prophets, the old days, the many and various ways, and the sun bit uh, to help you prepare for what's happening here in August. Uh, links to subscribe to the channel and donate are down below. Please click on those. Uh, it's going to be a lovely week. Uh, I know that uh, it's been a bit warm lately, but this week promises to be quite enjoyable. So um, yay, get out there, enjoy some stuff. End of the week, I'm going camping, doing a pastor weekend. I'm going to do some fishing on Lake Michigan. Um, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a really nice week. This is this is like this what the forecast looks like is Michigan summer at its best. So get out there and enjoy it. All right. Uh, so today's joke. I uh, a uh, some of the guys walking through the mall, and a marketing person corners him and starts asking questions. Uh, he says, "Can I just ask you a quick question?" What, uh, what shaving cream do you use? I guess it's Jim's. Okay, it's done Jim's. Uh, what, uh, what aftershave do you use? Jim's. Jim's, yeah, okay. What about what deodorant do you use? Jim's. Jim's. What toothpaste do you use? Jim's. What shampoo do you use? Jim's. What soap do you use? Jim's. The interviewer's like, look, I've been doing marketing research my whole life. Um, you know, I've, I've never heard of Jim's. What is this? What is Jim's? Is it a foreign company? No, nah, Jim's my brother. So there you go. Next time you get called for a marketing survey, uh, you can try that one. Uh, today's sign that it is the apocalypse is that Lake Mead, the water level has dropped 10 feet in the last two months. That just blew my mind. Like, I know we've been hearing the stories about how the water level has been dropping and they're finding like bodies and boats and things like that. Uh, but 10 feet in two months. That is just unbelievable. I, I don't know what folks are going to do there. I really don't because it looks like the water's going to run out eventually. And then like, what happens? Um, I have no idea. But it doesn't look good. It might actually be the apocalypse for those folks. Something like 25 million people, I think I read, get water from there. Not good. Uh, today's sign that it is not the apocalypse is that I have now been trained to be an election inspector. So I'm going to be working the polls on August 2nd and then November. November might also be the 2nd. I'm not sure. August 2nd is the is the primaries and then um, November, whatever the first, you know, the election day in November is. I'll be working those. So um, I'm excited to do that. You know, I just, you know, there were a lot of people saying things about elections. And so I thought, you know what? I'll just show up and I'll do my part. So uh, I'm excited for that and I'm thankful for the opportunity. And uh, so, you know, I'm going to make sure that the elections are not the apocalypse, but Lake Mead is shrinking by 10 feet in two months. So obviously it is the apocalypse. So um, decide for yourself, right? Uh, a lot happening at church. There is the Prophets Sermon Series coming up, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about in our devotion time. That will start in August. It'll run the four Sundays of August. For those of you who might be new around here, every August we do a sermon series on something from the Old Testament. Uh, we've studied individual books. We've studied individual people. And now we're looking at the prophets just in general. Uh, so we're looking at a couple books of the prophets. And we'll do excerpts from those. And we'll talk a little bit about who the Old Testament prophets are, what they did, why they matter. Um, and you know what kind of what what their message was. So um, it's gonna it's gonna be really cool, and you should expect that. In past years, we've done uh, devotional books. We're not doing that this year. Um, we're just uh, we're just kind of picking and choosing some segments from the prophets, and we're gonna we're gonna preach about them. And the the worship theme, well, the music and the liturgy will be all about the small Testament prophets. So. In the past, we've gone kind of specific. Now we're going a little bit broad with the prophets. And I'm excited about that. So you look for that. It won't start this Sunday. This Sunday is the 31st of July. It'll start the following Sunday. It'll be August 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th. So that will be fun. Um, Sanctuary AC is working. So if you weren't here uh, this past Sunday or you were watching online, you couldn't tell. We're good to go. 
How long will it last? I have no idea. But it should last a while because we put a whole lot of money into both things. Um, speaking of online, uh, we have tried some new stuff with the slides and it's cool. Uh, there's some things that work better, some things that don't. So if you are watching uh, on, on whatever, however you might be watching worship and you see something that doesn't exactly work, there are some things that we need to know in order to be able to, uh, for that information to be helpful, right? So like sometimes folks will say, well, the slides were too big or the words were too small. That, that, that doesn't help us. We need specifics. If you could tell us what device you're watching it on, are you watching it on a big screen TV? You're watching it on your phone. If you could tell us what part in the worship it was, it was the hymn of the day, it was the opening liturgy, it was communion, whatever part in the worship, and then, you know, tell us what tell us what the issue is then, you know. Then we can go and we can look at that specific part and we can say, okay, that specific part needs work. Your feedback is important, right? Because you, there's, you know, 50 or 75 of you or 100 of you watching this every week and I, I'm doing it. So you have a lot of eyeballs. Those eyeballs are important and we need your feedback. We really do. We just need a little bit more specific information. So if you could provide some more specific information, check it out. Let us know when you see an issue. Let us know what device. Let us know what point in the worship and then let us know what the issue was. That would be great and that would be a super help uh, to, to, getting, to getting things better, which is what we want. We want things to get better. Uh, and then finally, Pastor Morgan's wedding showers this weekend, RSVP, register. You register for these things. Who knew? This will be my second wedding shower of my life. The first one was one that my internship church did for me when I was getting married, which was very cool. So um, this will be fun. I'm excited. I'm not sure what to wear. Very stressful. Um, so today's devotion, yeah. <coughs> again, Hebrews. This might sound familiar to you, by the way. I'm going to read it again, see if it sounds familiar to you. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by his son. That sounds familiar to you. It is one of the pieces of liturgy in Holden Evening Prayer. And it's kind of my favorite part. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by his son. The prophets are how God would communicate with people way back when, right? Way back when, before we had Jesus, right? And even before there was a Bible, God would send prophets to communicate God's word. What would the prophets communicate? Well, they weren't necessarily predicting the future. That's a big thing, you know? Now, sometimes we look back and we go, oh, that was a prediction of the future. Okay, fine. But a lot of times they were speaking God's word in a specific place, in a specific time, to a specific circumstance. So we have the Bible. We can know what God has said in other circumstances, and we can look at that and we can go, oh, okay, well, that's what God said then, so this is probably where God's at right now. For a big stretch of the ancient Jewish people, they didn't have this, right? they didn't have the Bible. And even when they did, you know, they God still sent prophets, right? People who were called by God to go and deliver a message. This is what I want you to say. Go say this. We today, now being Christians, have Jesus, right? Who is the ultimate authority, more so than the prophets, because Jesus is God, right? And we have the Holy Spirit, which is God speaking to directly. But back then, the Holy Spirit used prophets. And so, you know, yes, Jesus is the, the main dude, right? But that doesn't mean that we can't learn things from what the prophets said back in the day. So, Jesus is still the main guy. Like we're not like putting the prophets on the equivalent level of Jesus, but there's cool stuff there. And we hear a lot about Jesus, right? I mean, most of my sermons tend to be about Jesus. Most of Pastor Morgan's sermons tend to be about Jesus. If you were going to read a book about being Christian, it's probably about Jesus. You know, Jesus is, Jesus gets a lot of attention, deservedly slow, right? This is Jesus. We're complaining about that. But, you know, spending a couple of weeks talking about the prophets can be pretty cool. So, I'm excited about this series because I think it's a chance, again, to explore our understanding about the breadth of, of the people of God and their experience of God, right? I mean, we've had, we had uh, what, 3,000 plus years, 3,500 years of, of the history of God's people from about 1,500 with Abraham and, uh, and that stuff 
you know, that's kind of the, the start of the, like the history part, you know, about then up to today, you know, 1500 BC to now, it's 3,500 years. There's a lot of good stuff in there. And, and what I particularly like about the prophets is, is hinted at in this reading from Hebrews, which says in many and various ways, God spoke to our ancestors by the prophets. Many and various ways. There's a lot of interesting images that the, that the prophets used, some things that they wore or carried. They did all kinds of stuff to kind of get people's attention to communicate God's will in a different way. Like I'll use different illustrations. They were like that. They used a lot of different techniques and it's, it's, it's interesting, right? Um, and, and so there's some, there's some question when we're reading these things, like, did this really happen? Or is this just a metaphor that the prophet used or a, a way of, a, you know, a sermon illustration? Now, I will tell you that if I tell a story in worship, it happened, right? I don't, I don't make stuff up like that. Um, but did, but, but maybe they did, maybe, you know, and I've, I've written things that weren't true, that were designed to tell a story, create an idea, get a point across. Uh, I don't do that in sermons. Um, when I'm telling a story about my own life, if I'm talking about Kroger Tuesday afternoon, whatever I say happened at Kroger happened. Um, but I totally get and love, you know, stories that are created, right? And images and metaphors that are used. That's what uh, the prophets did. And a lot of it's kind of cool. So we'll get into that. We're going to start August 7th. Look for that. Um, it'll be fun. We don't, again, we don't have devotions this year, but I, I think it's pretty cool. So, um, you know, and the whole idea here, right, is for us to learn and grow from the experiences of those who came before. That's kind of what the Bible gives us. It gives us God's word so that we can learn and grow from the experiences of people who came before. What did, what was their, what did they do, right? What did God say to them? That's God's word. How do we apply that to our lives? So let's just pray for that, right? Let's pray for us to, to learn and grow through the Bible and through our understanding of experiencing, uh, you know, what people experienced who came before us. So let's get comfortable. Take a few deep breaths. I take three. God, thank you for all those people who've come before us who have experienced you and who have heard your word. Help us to learn and grow from their experience and from what you said to them. Help us to apply that to our lives so that our lives can be better, so that we can make your word a better world, this world a better place by growing your reign. Um, help us, Lord to learn and grow from the experiences of others through the Bible and through the prophets in particular in these few weeks in August. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, the world has gone Looney Tunes, right? Lake Mead is down 10 feet in two months. Things are crazy. But Jesus is still risen. That has not changed. The tomb is still empty. That has not changed. So, be smart. Stay safe. Love everybody. I'll see you soon.